Hello and welcome to our video on exponential modeling. Now there are two types of exponential models we could look at. Uh, the first one is exponential growth, which is something getting bigger all the time. Might have another go at drawing that. And the second example is exponential decay, something getting smaller all the time. Most of your graphs will look like um, one of these two. And what we're looking for is when we've got some real world data um, and some data points, we're looking at how can we find a model that will be as close to those data points as possible. And the reason we might like to do that is if we've only got data points up to here, we can predict into the future where it's going. Or if we've only got um, the current data points, we can um, interpolate, which is the opposite of extrapolate, uh, back to see what the points would have been back in the past. Uh, most of the time you're going to have time along the x-axis and your y-axis is going to be whatever you're measuring that's getting less, less in the decay model or increasing in the growth model. So I'm going to look at growth and decay separately. The first one we're going to look at is exponential growth and the general equation we can use to represent exponential growth is this one. There's a few different ones out there, um, but this is one that we're going to use. Uh, you might see other ones with a different letter here uh, for the zero. It's, it means the same thing, they're just represented with different pronumerals. Um, what do all these letters mean? Right, we've got a here is the growth factor. And I've just realized this times looks a bit funny. So I'll fix that up. A is the growth factor and you can find the growth factor by doing the second y value divided by the first y value. And I'll give you an example of what that means in a moment. But it's telling you how much is it jumping up by each time. Is it doubling? Is it tripling? Um, how, how much is it increasing by each step of the way? Uh, T equals time and y0 is the initial value, so what it starts at, at time equals 0. Real life examples of exponential growth that you might be asked to model would include um, appreciation, which is when you buy something and it increases in value um, over time, for example an old painting um, that's worth a lot of money and it keeps it, it getting worth more and more money every year, um, a vintage car that might increase in value over time, um, something like that. A, oh, there's a spelling error there. A money investment that grows each year. You put money, a certain amount in at the start and it keeps doubling or tripling every year. Um, and population growth, uh, human population growth, animals, rabbits, kangaroos, whatever. Um, and also bacteria, small things that um, break up into two and double um, and quadruple uh, after each time point. So our first example here, I've got uh, something increasing in, t in temperature over time. Um, and the question says, find an exponential rule to fit the following table of values. You might like to pause and have a go at using this equation up here, otherwise you can continue to watch. Okay, first thing we need to do always is write the formula we're planning on using. So I'm going to copy this one down here. Before I do that, actually, I'm going to let you know that I will be using two different methods. You can choose whichever method you prefer to do your working. So this will be method one and method two I'll do over this side. Secondly, uh, what was that formula up here? Y equals Y zero times A to the T. And our initial value, which is y0, is, so at time 0, our initial value is 5. Our growth factor, which is a, is going to be this second y value divided by the first one. 15 divided by 5, which is 3. And then we can just substitute these straight into this equation here. Um, I'm not going to use y, I'm going to use uh, t for temperature, capital T. If you've got temperature and time, time is always a little t, um, and temperature can be a big T. So big T 
equals y0 times a, which is 3, and you leave the little t in there. So there's your first um, equation. Method 1, done, found. Method 2 is slightly different. Um, uses a slightly different equation. Uh, you might have seen this one on your Maths is Cool worksheet. A times B to the T. It looks similar, it's just got an A here instead, and a B. Um, what we need to do here is use two data points. So we use, it's always a good idea to use the first two. So the first one is 0, 5. I'm going to sub 0, 5 into this equation here. 5 equals a times b to the 0. And b to the 0 is 1. So a equals 5. So we can rewrite this now, knowing that a is 5. We still need to find out what b is, so we're going to use our second value, which is 115. You always need pairs of values for this method. Um, 15 equals 5 times b to the 1. b to the 1 is just b. So 5b equals 15, b equals 3. And we can write this equation out fully now with b equals 3 in there. Oh, we're not going to use y. Like we said in part 1, we're going to use t for temperature equals 5 times 3 to the t. And that should be the same equation that we got over here. Either method is fine, completely up to you which one you're more confident with. Part B here, sketch the graph of your function. Probably one of the most important things here is the labeling of the axes. Um, you're always going to have, have it in the top uh, first quadrant here, so you don't need to bother drawing the other quadrants. Um, it's growing exponentially, starting at 5 and going up. So you need to label this one, this point. There's no uh, t-axis intercept down here, so we don't need to label anything. You do need to label the axis, the axes, though. So we could put t for time, and you need to say what the units are. This one's in minutes. And this one will be temperature in degrees Celsius. I think that's what it was. Yep. And there you go. If you want to put one other point on the graph, you can. You can pick one of these, a 2 or a 3. Put it in here, 2, 45. But that's not necessary. Okay. Exponential decay. Remember, is the one that goes downwards. Like this, so something getting smaller over time. So we can use a similar equation, y equals y0 times a to the t, similar equation. Um, oh, there's an error. Instead of the growth factor, we're going to have decay factor. And the decay factor is a, t is time and y0 is the initial value. When we do the decay factor this time, it's still going to be the second y value divided by the first y value, or you can use any uh, two values, as long as they're next to each other. You could do this one divided by this one. You should get the same division each time, the same factor. Um, we're still going to do y2 divided by y1, but this time, because it's decaying, your uh, decay factor will be a fraction. For example, I'm going to put this in green, um, an example of an exponential decay equation that you might end up with. This would be your initial value, y0. I'm just making this one up. 
we've got a fraction, that's how you can tell it's a decay, to the power t. Now if I try and rewrite this one, I can rewrite a half as 2 to the negative 1, using our index laws, and I can end up with 2 to the negative t. So I want you to also be aware that you can have an equation that has a negative t up there like this one and a whole number. So if you use this uh, with, the pos with the positive t power, you'll have a decay factor, factor which is a fraction uh, if you rewrite it and you, you don't need to but I'm just letting you know in case you get a question that has a negative in it and it's not a fraction and you think oh this can't possibly be decay. If you've got a negative power it's going to be a decay. So two different ways of writing that. Uh, real life examples of exponential decay include radioactive decay, uh, cooling of liquids and other materials, population dying out, um, for example endangered species, and depreciation of items. So things that you buy new and they immediately lose their value and they keep losing values as, as time goes on. Second example here, I've got uh, a table of values of showing the decay of a radioactive substance over time. So here you can see the different example. Uh, in the first example, time was in minutes, this time is in years, and the mass in grams is getting smaller and smaller over time, so it's decaying away. Finding an equation to represent the data, we need to, you might like to pause and, and have a go at this yourself, otherwise keep listening. First of all, we need to write out the equation that we're going to use. The initial value is 80. The decay factor is 40 divided by 80 equals a half. So we get for our equation, I keep writing y. Our equation is going to be m equals 80 times a half to the power t. Now you could equally write this as 2 to the negative t as I explained above. Either of these solutions is completely fine. Method 2, I'll just put a 1 here, 2 here. Method 2 sub Hang on, y equals a times b to the t sub 0, 80 and we get 80 equals a times b to the 0, a equals 80, y equals 80 times b to the t sub 140, 40 equals 80 times b to the 1, b equals a half, and we end up with m equals 80 times a half to the t, which is the same as what we've got over here. Drawing the graph of this rule, Again, it's all in the labelling of the axes. It's going to be decay. Where does it start? 80. And this is time in years. And this is mass in grams.